Stasa 23 here, and today's knife therapy, we have the Work Tough Gear Nomad EDC. This knife comes in at $159, and is this the best fixed blade for EDC? Let's find out. These are made in their Taiwan factory by Work Tough Gear, and they come uh, like you see here, and I think they have a couple other variations you get a kydex sheath with it and two soft loops. We'll talk about that later. The Nomad EDC was designed by Mr. Zeke Minacho. Uh, he was a Forge and Fire contestant, and um, yeah, I see he designed some pretty cool designs so far with Work Tough. Uh, let's get some quick specs out of the way. This is a pretty good size knife uh, for EDC. It's about the length I look for. This is 7.6 inches. You have a 3.5 inch blade. Your grip area from here to the inside right here is 3.6 inches. You got a nice chunky handle scale thickness all the way right here of 0.86 inches. So it's gonna fill out that palm really nicely. Your blade stock thickness is a pretty stout 0.156 inches. And uh, the behind the edge thickness in this portion right here, you got a, you got a two grindy, uh, thicker grind up here in the front, but here to here is uh, around 29 thousandths behind the edge, sharpened at around 20 degrees per side with a convex edge bevel. And then in this, what they're calling a modified tanto portion up here in the front at the thickest portion is around 50 thousandths toward that tip. So you should be able to do some tip work and not have to worry about it. And it's sharpened at around 26 degrees per side up here in the front. For me, the Nomad EDC falls into, I'd say, the belt knife, companion knife uh, category. However, depending on what your criteria for an EDC fixed blade is, it may be perfect for your EDC needs. One thing's for certain, Work Tough Gear continues to impress me. Now let's take a closer look at this knife. Like I said earlier, they are calling this a modified Tanto, and I, hopefully you can see this line right here where you have the thicker portion up here. Like I said, you have a very stout tip right there that definitely could handle some uh, light prying, uh, some boring, and other stuff. Uh, I had no issues. I did do some light prying with this, even though <laughs> for some reason that footage got lost or edited out, one of the two. Uh, you got this nice little top swedge that, that just thins out that just a little bit, but if you feel all the way here, you pretty much have full thickness all the way to that tip. Nice and reinforced there. You do have a very sharp 90 degree spine that we will test out later. This little divot right here, um, it doesn't really, I guess if you're gonna be doing some sort of thrusting motion cut, it, that's a good little spot. However, I, I found myself uh, overshooting that pretty much all the time. Um, you have, uh, it's going to be hard to show this. The finish on here is it's like a uh, high satin finish, and then they did a stone wash finish to it. It's a nice looking finish, and I think they offer other finishes as well. There's the, the designer's maker mark right here. And then you have engraved uh, Nomad EDC knife here, and then the Work Tough. This particular one is in Bowler N690 with a cryo on it, and then it has the born on date right there. Um, one thing that I've noticed with the Work Tough gear, they do an excellent, excellent job with their heat treatments, and uh, a good proper heat treat on N690 is is a good steal. It's not a super steel, but it will hold an edge for a good amount of time, and it's decently tough, and it's very, very corrosion resistant, which is very, very uh, big, uh, a big thing for me here living in Louisiana with the high humidity that we have. Now, it doesn't have a sharpening choil. However, that edge termination goes all the way to the... Uh, the back right here, so as long as you sharpen it from here on, you shouldn't have, uh, you shouldn't get any recurve. Uh, I would have loved to see a little sharpening notch put in there just because it'd make it easier on my fixed angled system or on my work sharp. Uh, this knife has a saber grind to it that comes up, you know, pretty much almost to the top of the blade up here and stays rather thick coming down. And then you have a Decent uh, convex edge bevel right here. Now let's let's see how well this thing performs.
Their knives come ridiculously sharp from factory. They come with a, uh, a somewhat of a mirror polished edge and it was gliding through this cardboard effortlessly. The knife does have a pretty big belly up there in the front. So with the longer cuts, you may find yourself sliding out of the cut toward the end of the, you know, toward the tip area. However, the size cardboard I'm using here, I had no problem whatsoever. Now we're gonna test uh, the ergos with this piece of birch. Um, their handles, man, they're always super ergonomic and this handle is nice and hand filling with a good palm swell in that uh, middle section of the handle. All the edges of the G10 are nice and rounded over. So all that is, you know, signs of a excellent, excellent handle design. I had no uh, hot spots to speak of. My forearms weren't fatiguing. And uh, this is a pretty beefy uh, fixed blade. So I decided to do a uh, little batoning with the knife. <laughs> Not something I always do, but especially with my fixed blades. And this one, I'm also doing those lateral cuts right there, just to put a little stress on that primary, on that edge bevel to see if it's anything's gonna fail. Uh, spoiler, it did nothing to that edge. We were able to cut cut through the uh, piece of birch, nothing, nothing major or anything, but definitely tell you that it has a good heat treat on that edge. This really would be a great camp knife. Uh, it'd be great for getting a fire started, making some feather sticks, uh, making some kindling, and basically why I was doing this because I was enjoying it. I have a glove on in this one, so I'm not testing the ergos out as much here just making some uh, feather sticks so I can uh, light a fire uh, later on in the video. But for me, you know, this would have been a perfect hunting knife to clean game or to uh, use out in the woods while hunting, just in case I need to light a fire or anything. Definitely excellent companion knife so far for me, and I, I really enjoyed carrying it on the belt. Here, we're just making a little tent steak or a vampire poker, whatever you want to call it and uh, also testing out that tip. I had some footage of me doing some light prying with that tip. Do not know if I edited it out or what, but here we go. This is those shavings, testing out that 90 degree spine on this knife, throwing sparks like nobody's business. I haven't done this in probably eight years, lit a fire with a ferro rod, and I must say this thing was throwing some monster sparks, and look, I was actually able to start the fire. Um, we're not gonna do nothing crazy here. <laughs> not it's not cold in the least over here in Louisiana. <laughs> now we move on to my normal assortment of items to cut. Um, the knife has, like I said before, a big old belly up there in the front, so it made slicing a breeze, especially on a flat surface. As you notice, I got a new cutting board and before I was tearing up my wooden cutting board so often that I decided to try out something diff different. This was this is a Japanese cutting board. It's some very dense, dense rubber. So I'm, it's taking me a little time to get used to cutting on it because it kind of catches your cuts. But as you can see here, it, it didn't really struggle on pretty much any of this material. The edge is still doing really, really well. And I'm using Mainly, I've noticed that I was using that area where the transition between the two grinds on this knife uh, meet. Um, it, it was, I guess it might be a little thinner right there and it just was made it really easy to push into whatever I was cutting and rock back and forth. Now we move on to the half inch twisted sisal rope. And one thing I was kind of worried about was that polished edge not having any bite to it. Now it wasn't push cutting through the rope, of course, uh, but however, it I think it did just fine, especially when I started my cuts with that area I was talking about where those two uh, grinds intersect. It, it just made it super easy in my opinion. And not to mention you have extra heft with this thicker blade stock. So that helped my momentum going through the uh, rope. Now at this point, um, I thought it was performing well, still had a good edge to it. I could just tell that it's not a super thin cutter and it didn't have the bite I usually like whenever I'm doing this type of cuts, but this is the edge it came with and it was more than acceptable. I ended up making 45 cuts. 
Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting. I enjoyed making it for y'all. Let's see how that edge is still doing. I uh, got a little bit of a piece of paper here. Uh, yeah, I figured it, it still felt pretty good. Uh, it has a one just one minor uh, little, I don't know, maybe a roll or a chip right where the majority, right there where I did, you know, started most of those cuts. Nothing that, you know, you can really even see. And as you can see, you still, you had that, you know, somewhat of a mirror polished edge there, convex edge. I think it held up excellent. Now let's take a look at the Kydex sheet that it comes with. Excellent, excellent job. They always nail these Kydex sheets. Excellent. Nice and thick Kydex right here. They did a good job of, uh, you know, cleaning this up, making it nice to where you don't have any hard edges or any sharp edges. And uh, it has a nice thumb ramp to push off with. And listen to this positive click here. Very positive click. And as you can see, it wants to shoot off. That's always a good sign. Uh, I use the two soft loops carried at Scout Carry on my belt the majority of the time. Uh, you could also throw a tech lock on here if you wanted to. It has the lashing points all over the place. Excellent job. Um, you do have drainage hole on both sides just in case you get some humidity in here or it gets wet and you want to be able to dry out this sheath so it's not stuck into the sheath. So always good to see that as well. All right, let's take a look at the handle area. Now, you can tell they put a lot of hand work into the handles, and that's something that's really important because if it's not comfortable, I'm not going to use it. Now, you, like I said, you have this nice thick scales, palm swell up here, and it kind of tapers down a little bit on this direction. You have uh, two layered G10. You have green and black layered G10, and that really allows you to see how well they uh they they rounded over these edges right here from the way that uh the the layered g10 looks if they didn't do a good job you'd have waviness in it it would look really weird no high spots on the scales whatsoever they fit perfectly flush so there were definitely some hand fitment i think i saw on their instagram them doing the actual uh sanding very very nice you have a brown g10 liner Accent liner. I think it looks really nice as well. These are bolt-on construction T10 uh, hardware. So if you happen to get it wet or get some gunk underneath there, you can clean it out. You don't have to worry about it rusting on you, uh, even though N690 is a very corrosion-resistant steel. Uh, I had no hot spots whatsoever. I love these little divots. I always like seeing those little divots for whenever you want to you know, do that pinch grip and that sawing type cut or put, putting one thumb right there and putting this up here. It really locks you into what you're doing. <clears throat> one good thing about having that edge right there and being able to get right up on it, it's kind of like choking up without having uh, to waste some edge with a forward finger choil. I mean, I can get right up on that edge and you know do my fine, uh, fine cutting, you know, make some feather sticks or something. Excellent job there. Of course, this is a full tang, just meaning that the steel goes all the way to the back of the handle one piece construction on the the steel um you do have a lanyard hole and they did a good job of um knocking off the high spots so you don't have any sharp you don't have sharp edges on that lanyard um you do have your uh your tang extends over to the back so you have a nice little pommel right there if you needed to use that for either some left, less than lethal force on something <laughs> or to break some nuts or, you know, crack something, shatter some glass or something. That's a you know, nice thing to have on a fixed blade. For me, the reason why this wouldn't be, you know, an EDC fixed blade is just because of the weight. Um, it's a good size, but that thicker stock just gives it some extra heft, which is not a problem whatsoever. And it, it's more of a belt knife because I, it's something that I'm going to carry my belt and not slipped in my pocket. And that's just my criteria for an EDC fixed blade. Uh, but definitely, definitely something I will be putting on the belt anytime I'm going in the woods or anything or strap it to another big fixed blade. Now let's check this out on the scale. First, without the sheath in grams, 164 grams or 5.78 ounces. Now with the sheath in grams... 230.9 or 31 gram, 231 grams are 8.14 ounces.
So like I said, that's definitely an acceptable weight for a fixed blade, just not one that I'm gonna have clipped to my pocket because I usually, I mean, I'll always have a folder on me as well and that's just gonna pull, pull on my shorts that I usually have on or my jeans. So it's just something that's easier for me to clip on a belt. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Ontario Rap Model 3 and the SE Azula 2. It's just a hair smaller than the Rat 3 and it's a good bit bigger than the uh, Azula 2. Next up, we have the Kaiser Harpoon and the Work Tough Clapache. Um, it's about identical in length to the Kaiser Harpoon and it dwarfs the Clapache. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. It didn't have really much, much. Like I said, I would have loved to see a sharpening notch in here. It just makes it a little bit easier to sharpen. But that said, I did love how I could get right up on that edge whenever I was doing you know, wood shaving and stuff like that. One other thing that I would have liked to see Instead of having the lanyard hole there, um, I would have loved to see them, you know, try to put it, put a longer hole into that pummel right there. That way, you know, if you have larger hands, it won't be uh, interfering with your grip at all. Not something that bothered me, but you know, somebody who has large, extra large hands, that may become a problem. It would have been nice to have it sticking out toward the end. So my final thoughts and opinions, I absolutely love the knife. Like I said, it's become a belt knife for me. Uh, I think the price is excellent. $159 for the craftsmanship, the heat treat, um, the, the, the awesome Kydex sheet that you're getting, all the stuff that you're getting here. I think it's an outstanding fixed blade. Uh, if you were ever wanting to try out a work tough knife and you haven't before, this might be a good one to start with. Uh, I love their big ones, but these are the ones that are more practical for me. Um, I just don't have a need to carry the bigger ones as much, but I still love them and I will review them as well. But there you go. These are actually available right now. So if you did want to pick up one of these, don't miss out because they will sell out. I, I, they're always selling out every time I go on their site. Uh, so there you go. I will have links down in the description to these from their site. I think even Knife Center has them as well. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.